Well, good morning, friendship family. Um, I hope you bear with me this morning. I am doing something brand new. I have never um, done a Facebook Live. I've actually never done anything on the computer like this, so I hope this works. I hope you're able to hear me, um, and we're going to do our best to make it through these uncertain times. Um, and before we get started with anything else, let us begin with prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for modern technology even when we're not sure how to make it work. God, we thank you for this ability to be able to connect even from our homes. God, for all of those who are being affected right now by um, this virus and, and for all of those who feel stuck in their homes, we pray a special blessing. God, we ask your Holy Spirit to be poured out upon us. Be with us, God, as we seek to worship you as best we can, um, given the nature of our situation. Come, Holy Spirit, come. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to begin um, with a few announcements we're supposed to have um, Bible study tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening at 7 and what I hope to do is to connect with all of the participants and find out um, if they want to meet and if you do we will um, and then as well on Tuesday morning we have a morning Bible study and I'll uh, be checking in or please check in with me and let me know um, if you are able to to come or if you want to come and we will we will make do what whatever um, the groups decide to do as well there's united methodist men this week and i'm sure reggie will be in touch to let us know what the plans are there um, next sunday we will meet um, maybe facebook live if if this works um, next sunday at 11 o'clock and then we also have a, an administrative council meeting um, next Sunday evening at 5 and uh, Bobby and I will uh, talk about that and make the decision and and let you know about that um, so I think that all of the announcements um, if there are others we will do a phone tree I will be in the office so um, Monday through Thursday this week so please feel free to stop by um, and so that kind of thing will go on as usual. Um, so with without anything else, and there's certainly no music because I'm not going to sing. Um, I hope you sing today, though. Um, let us begin um, as we go to God in prayer, and then we will have scripture and some kind of sermon. So will you pray with me? God, we thank you so much for this time. God, we ask that you be with all of those who are sick, all of those who are in need, all of those who hear the sound of my voice as we worship you, holy God. We seek to follow your son no matter what stands in our way. And God, as those who believe in him, as those who seek to follow him, as those who have been redeemed by him, we now pray that prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, this morning's scripture um, is, we're actually having two. The first one will come from the Gospel of Matthew, and I'll be reading from chapter 9, um, verse 10 through 13. That's Matthew chapter 9, uh, verses 10 through 13. Hear now the word of God. And as he sat at dinner in the house, Many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with 
tax collectors and sinners. But when he heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of, of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. And our second passage comes from the Gospel of John. I'll be reading from chapter 8, the first 11 verses. John chapter 8, beginning with verse 1. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again to the temple. And all the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and he said to them, let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And she said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Good and gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O oh God. For truly you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, my mentor and friend, Reverend Naomi King, tells a story of having breakfast in a country diner. She was traveling south. I'm not sure where she was going, but it was early morning, and so she stopped at a little diner that was right off of the, the interstate, and she went in, and she made her order. She ordered scrambled eggs, bacon, and toast. And when the server came back with her plate and sat it down in front of her, she noticed this big bowl of grits sitting on the side of the, the plate. And she thought that maybe the, the server had brought her someone else's order. And so she said to her, I don't think this is mine. I didn't order grits. Well, the server looked at her with a big grin on her face and she said, ma'am, in the South, anytime you order breakfast, you get grits. And so as Naomi was eating her breakfast and eating the grits that she didn't order, she realized that grace is like grits. You get grace whether you order it or not. Grace is like grits. Well, our two gospel messages this morning, or passages this morning, are beautiful examples of grace. Jesus is surrounded by uh, sinners and tax collectors and women of ill repute. It seems that these type of folks are the ones, excuse me, it seems that these are the ones that um, are drawn to Jesus. And I guess it would be because of his compassion and merciful spirit and the grace he offered it drew folks to him now in Matthew Jesus is having a meal with tax collectors and sinners and in this time period well actually I guess it even today you were judged by the company that you kept and so the Pharisees when they see him with the, the tax collectors and the sinners the question that they ask the disciples is really not an odd question at all why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners well Jesus hears this question and so he answers and he's rather clever as he does I would guess that his answer was unexpected though Jesus says those who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick 
I don't think the Pharisees really understood what Jesus was saying. If they did, the gospel writer doesn't elaborate on that. And to understand just how clever this, this is of Jesus, we must remember that these religious leaders not only followed the law, but they enforced the law. And as we see in the passage from John with them bringing the woman to Jesus, it seems that these Pharisees are so self-righteous that they did not realize that they too were sick. They were as sin sick as the sinners and the tax collectors around Jesus, and they needed a physician as well. Those who are well have no need of a physician, Jesus tells them. And then he says, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Now remember, the Pharisees were focused on the law, both the written law and the oral law. And in this time, ritual was very important. It was a time that sacrifice was still happening in the temple. And so from the Pharisees' point of view, to please God, one must follow the law just as closely as possible. But Jesus says, that is our mercy, not sacrifice. Well, these religious leaders, you see, they had it all together. They knew the law. It was written on their scrolls that they read. And they followed the law, and they enforced that law. They were righteous. But Jesus came to call not the righteous, but the sinners. And for Jesus, there are no righteous. All are sinners. All are in need of forgiveness and love and mercy and grace. These Pharisees, whether they knew it or not, were also being offered grace. And I hope, I hope they went away and learned this. Uh, an author that I mention quite often, C.S. Lewis, was once asked, is there one belief unique to Christianity? And he replied, oh, that's easy. It's grace. You see, grace is God's unconditional, undeserved, unmerited love for all of humankind. From the most pious religious leader to the vilest of sinners, we live in grace. Now, John's story of the, the woman caught in adultery is also an amazing example of grace. The Pharisees, and I, I watch these guys in the scripture, they need to get a hobby. The Pharisees catch a woman in adultery. Please note the patriarchal nature of this story. There is no man caught in adultery. Now, there's definitely a double standard here, but I digress. Um, the Pharisees catch a woman in adultery. And Jesus is within the temple, and he's probably either in the Gentile court or the women's court because they bring a woman to him. And he's there, surrounded by people once again, and he is teaching them. Now, the Pharisees are looking to trip Jesus up. They're wanting to catch him doing something wrong, breaking a law. So they bring this woman to him and they announce the law that she's broken and they announce the punishment that is required. You see, this law is in black and white and we find that law in at least a couple of the passages of uh, scripture that we have today. This is Leviticus 20 verse 10. If a man commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress shall be put to death. As I read this, I wonder if the Pharisees forgot about the adulterer. In any event, it's also in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verses 23 and 24. If there is a young woman, a virgin already engaged to be married, and a man meets her in the town and lies with her, you shall bring both of them to the gate of that town and stone them to death. The young woman because she did not cry out for help in the town and the man because he violated his neighbor's wife so you shall purge the evil from your midst you see this is some tough stuff and praise be to god that we live in grace and so jesus this friend of sinners is asked now what do you say it's as if the pharisees are saying to him here she is jesus 
caught red-handed. Moses' law is clear. She should be stoned. Are you going to disobey Moses' law? God gave Moses this law. Are you going to obey? Well, Jesus won't be trapped. And so he strategically turns their judgment from the woman back to them. And he doesn't judge them. He causes them to judge themselves. Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. So standing in the temple, uh, do these Pharisees lie? Do they say that they have no sin and stone the woman? Or do they acknowledge their sin and walk away? Jesus' words testify that we are all sinners and we are all in need of forgiveness and love and mercy and grace, even the most pious religious leaders. Now, please hear me when I say Jesus did not and does not condone sin, but he does offer mercy and grace in the face of sin. His words to the woman, neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. There is no stoning here. There is mercy, and there's grace. Grace is like grits. We get it whether we ask for it or not. Now, every human being fails to live up to God's standards. All have sinned, and all have fallen short of the glory of God. None are perfect. None are righteous. We all need forgiveness. And we will continue to need forgiveness because we are imperfect and we are prone to sin. The good news is that even with our flaws, Jesus loves and accepts us as beloved children of God. We are accepted just as we are. We will not be left the way that, that God finds us, though, because God wants so much more for us. And through God's sanctifying grace, we mature in our spirit, and we grow in our relationship with God. So as we continue this sermon series of the seven essential questions, today's question is, am I accepted? And the answer to that question is yes. Through grace, we are accepted just as we are, flaws and all. Jesus loves and accepts us all as beloved children of God. The thing is, as we begin to acknowledge this acceptance and we begin to repent of our sins, we also begin to mature in God's sanctifying grace. And then we want others to know. We want others to know that they are loved. We want others to know that they are not forgotten. There are folks who need to know that God has not forgotten them. And there may be folks listening today who do not realize you are accepted and you are loved just the way you are, flaws and all. You see, we're all a work in progress, all of us. No one better or worse, only at different stages in our spiritual journey, but we're all, for lack of a better term, under construction. And lest we forget Jesus' words, let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone. We are accepted, but we are sinners, each and every one of us. It's not our job to be the Pharisees, naming anyone else's sin or punishment. Jesus made that perfectly clear, and the Pharisees walked away. Each of us has plenty enough sin to deal with on our own, and not one of us has the credentials to judge. Only Christ can do that. Now hear Jesus' words. This is from Matthew 7, verses 1 through 5. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye, while the log is in your own eye. You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. And will there ever be a day, this side of glory, that any of us will be without sin? 
Now we believe that we are going on to perfection. John Wesley taught that, that it is possible to go on to perfection. How many of us will actually get there? Probably not many this side of glory. And so that means there's always going to be something in our eye. You see, our job as followers of Christ is to offer grace, to love folks where they are, to help them and to guide them and to nurture them. It is the Holy Spirit who convicts, the Holy Spirit who brings repentance, and the Holy Spirit that justifies through Christ Jesus. That's not our job. Am I saying we don't hold one another accountable? Absolutely not. But only when there is a covenant relationship and a, re a request for accountability. Even with our flaws, Jesus accepts us. He accepts us as beloved children of God. All of us and none are excluded. I want to conclude this morning with a, a beautiful story. Um, it's told by Tony Campolo, and he is a, a well-known author and pastor and professor. And it was years back, he had gone to Honolulu. Um, he was uh, speaking at a conference there. And when he arrived, he, of course, had jet lag, and, and he checked into his room, and he laid down for a nap. He woke up at 9 a.m., his time. It was 3 a.m. in Honolulu. Now, he was wide awake, so he walked down the street to a, an all-night diner, and he ordered a cup of coffee and a donut. I wonder if he got grits with that donut. And around 3.30 a.m., the door opened, and in walked some scantily clad prostitutes. And they were loud, and they were crude, and it made Tony uncomfortable. And so he decided that, that he would leave until he heard one of the women say, tomorrow is my birthday, I'll be 39 years old. And her friend responded, so what do you want me to do about it? You want me to throw you a birthday party? You want me to bake you a cake? You want me to sing? And the woman replied, why do you have to be so mean? I was just telling you, that's all. I don't want you to do anything. I mean, why should you give me a birthday party? I've never had a birthday party in my whole life. Why should I have one now? Well, after hearing this conversation, Tony hung around and he drank another cup of coffee. And after the women left, he looked at the owner and asked, do, do these women come in every night? And the owner said, you can pretty much set your clock by it. And so Tony asked the name of the woman. And the owner said, her name is Agnes. And then he asked something that was kind of strange. What do you think about us throwing her a birthday party tomorrow night right here? Well, the owner thought it was a wonderful idea, and he said that he would bake the cake. So at 2 a.m. the next night or morning, uh, Tony went back to the diner, and this time he came with crepe paper and balloons, and he decorated the inside of this diner. And he hung up a sign that said, Happy Birthday, Agnes. Apparently, the workers, the servers that had been there in the diner, well, they had gotten the word out, and by 3.15 a.m., prostitutes from all over Honolulu crowded into the diner. And at 3.30 a.m., just like clockwork, Agnes and her friends walked through the door, and everyone yelled, Happy Birthday, Agnes, and then they began to sing Happy Birthday to her. Agnes was so overwhelmed that one of her friends had to steady her because she was losing her balance. And then the owner brought out the cake with 39 candles burning. And Agnes was so emotional that she was unable to blow out the candles on her own. And so someone had to do that for her. But before she cut the cake, she asked, can I take this down the street and show it to my mom? And so, of course, everyone said, sure. And so as Agnes leaves the diner and the door shuts behind her, there is a silence that falls upon the diner. And as preachers do, Tony said, how about we pray for Agnes? And so they bowed their heads. All of these prostitutes standing around in the diner bow their heads, and Tony begins to pray. He prays for Agnes. And then he prays for all of the others who are in that place. He prays for God to help them realize their value, 
their worth and that they are loved. Well, when he finishes praying, uh, the, the owner looks at him and said, you didn't tell me you were a preacher. What kind of church do you belong to? And through what Tony claims is divine intervention, he said, I belong to a church that throws birthday parties for prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning. You see, grace is like grits. We get it whether we order it or not. Even with our flaws, Jesus loves us and accepts us as beloved children of God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You pray with me. God, we thank you for these stories of grace. And we thank you, God, that we all have stories of grace. God, we pray that we will feel your mighty Holy Spirit telling us that we are God's beloved children. That there's nothing that we can do that will separate us from your love. And God, for those who need to know that they are not forgotten, that no matter where they are, that you love them, we pray. And we also know, God, for them to know it will take us carrying this gospel to them. So, God, we ask that you put people in our way and give us the words to say. And, God, we pray that all will come to know that they are beloved children of yours. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, I did my best um, with the circumstances that we are under. I hope you were able to hear this, um, and we will uh, try to do this again next week. Um, I wish you the best today, and I pray that you have um, a blessed day. And as I say each week, in the name of God, go and be the church. Amen.